All right. Hey there. Welcome back to Time to Write. I'm Amy, and we are so glad that you're here. And this is my lovely friend, M. And yeah, let's talk about our topic of the day, which is uh, what to post on social media and what not to. Yes. Yes. Because those are two very distinct categories. <laughs> And I do want to say here, like, this is not prescriptive. I think M and I, like uh, one of our main, main things is we don't want to say here is how you have to do it. This right. is just our best practices, best advice based on um, our own experiences, as well as watching what's going on kind of in the online world. So, well, um, and also there's things that you wouldn't necessarily think to think about when you're starting off with you know, not very many followers, not much of a presence. And so as you're starting, and of course you can always change and pivot. You can always pivot, always. but we're just kind of, and so this isn't to paralyze you and make you think like, oh no, now I can't. We're just talking you through some of the pros and cons of different ways to show up online. So, um, right. And the big thing that we both, we have said a million times, and I think this is totally true, is that social media is a place to be authentic. Yes. But the point we're making is uh there's a there can be a place where your authenticity gets you into trouble and so that or hurts someone close to you or things like that so that's really what we kind of are thinking through to start with is how to be on social media in a way that is true to you but also doesn't show stuff you don't want to show so well and I would almost say um it's funny as we're talking about this I'm thinking about my kind of my value system around this and I really think that that value system formed when I was teaching school. So I taught eighth graders. So I kind of view social media and being online the same way I would with students that I'm teaching where I want to be professional. And there are parts of my life that I really don't want to invite people into outside of my, you know, close inner circle of friends and family. So, um, so I think maybe that's why the boundaries have come a little more naturally to me because I feel like I was literally trained in that as a teacher. But um, I think that's a super great rule of thumb. If you, if you were, cause this is our work. If you were in an office and going to an office every day, what would you share with everyone at large, which I guess you really are doing online and then some. <laughs> right. I think where, where that gets complicated is it depends on like, if you're at an office you know, there are some people where they wouldn't necessarily even share their writing at their office, depending True. on how, like, what kind of an office you have. So that, that is true. But at the same time, your, your, your heart is on the page. So you're going to be a little more vulnerable at, you know, at baseline, probably as an author or an artist than you would be as a, I can say when I worked in marketing for engineering firms, like, there wasn't, <laughs> people didn't need to see as much as my heart as, you know, absolutely as absolutely. you do as an author. But at the same time, I think that's the reminder, like number one, this is our work. This is what we're doing for work. But also there's this myth that you can't be authentic unless you give people, show people everything. And right. that is what we really want to talk to you guys about is the idea of you can have boundaries. You can say, these are things I'm happy to talk about. And these other things are totally off limits. Like for me, there are some people you'll see online, they never, never even show a picture of their kids. And there's some authors where they'll show that they have kids, but they'll never show like their faces or a picture of them. Um, for me, I just felt like I just didn't really want my kids I didn't want my kids to feel like they were part of my business. Um, and they basically kind of asked me not to show them, even starting when they were like old enough to, to understand what it meant. To understand. Um, and that does get into a little bit of a problem, which we kind of talked about before when we talked about my Instagram, which is if you're transitioning from a personal Instagram to a professional Instagram, you can be, there's a little bit of a, murky territory where you'll just you'll it'll just be case by case and you know you either delete or you just move forward right right um, well and I'll say my experience with that having done a podcast for several years that was specifically about 
parenting, I walked a very fine line. And in the very beginning, when my kids were younger, I think they were, let's see, I started in 2018. So they would have been, um, gosh, I can't do the math on that, like 17 and 15. Would that be right? 14 and 16, maybe. Anyway, I made sure to approach them with, hey, how do you feel about this? And what is okay and what isn't? And um, and for a little while, we they picked out like names that were, you know, like false names that so to protect the innocent involved right. in these stories, right? So that nobody would know. And then by the end of it, um, it was all open. But I think it was very interesting hearing their perspective about what they wanted out there online about themselves that was out of their control, right? So there's that piece of it. Then there was the other piece of, as I was sharing parenting stories, I worked very, very carefully and intentionally to make sure any stories that I told were about me and my experience as a parent versus my, who my kids are, right. Like, like how, how I'm responsible for my behavior. So I think it's the same with social media. This, there may be other people involved in your story, but this is about what, what is yours? Right. What is yours? Yeah. Um, and then I think another question for us to ask ourselves is like, what, what can you sustain? Like what, yes. What can you manage? So for example, for me, the writing journey all of you guys who are listening who are writers know it is up and down. There are things where things go exactly the way you wanted. And there are things where things do not go the way you wanted. And I, and there are some, there are people who have built huge communities of people where they really are like bonding over that stuff. For me, I made a real decision. There's two big reasons for this for me. The first is I was aspiring for so long. Like I sent my first query letter in 2004 and lifestyles didn't get published until, well, I didn't get agent until like 2017, 2018. So I was doing this for a long time. And so when I was listening to podcasts, it was a a little bit when you would hear people sort of complaining about the ups and downs of publishing I just, it's not, it wasn't crime your river. Like, I don't want to suggest that I it was just have sympathy. Tone deaf. It tone was just deaf. really, really hard when people are like, oh, my agent doesn't answer my emails. When I was like, I would give anything for an agent. And so I think that is an under, and here's the biggest thing for you as writers. If you build a community starting off, which is, there's nothing wrong with this. It's just another way of doing it. But if you build a community starting off where like you're really plugged in and sharing all, like I sent a hundred queries and I got a hundred no's and all that stuff, that process, you know, I put the book out and it didn't do well. That's all fine. Except then as you start to, as you start to be more successful, you might end up with some of the people who started off for you with you being irritated with you because they haven't seen that success yet and things like that. And so I'm not saying borrow trouble. I'm just saying like, for me, I didn't want my online presence to be super tied into my, into my things that I felt like were failures. And some of that was also Sometimes the ones where you're complaining can get the most likes and the most views and the most interaction and the most interaction. And this is super specific for me. I really do want to feel my feelings and go through it. And it sucks when you wanted something and you don't get it. It is really, 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 really hard. Yes. But I don't want to feel like I'm staying there for algorithmic purposes. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I would say it's not a but, it's an and. You and. want to be known for fill in the blank. You want to be intentional about what you're known for. And you don't want to be known for um, complaining. I think that's, yeah, we'll just and, lay it out there. But you- I think the other side of it is for someone else, 
that can be like a really important important part of how they interact online. So I'm not saying don't do this. I'm saying if you think about, spin it out, whether or not you, as the joke is, this is a Twitter joke, which I know Twitter's dying, is like, should that be a tweet or should it be a DM? (laughs) (laughs) Right. Because sometimes we're just crying out for community. That is a completely real, authentic, totally real thing that sometimes isn't public or right you reach for the phone or you're text a good friend versus... and i think that if you're listening to this and you're really mad at us because you're like i don't have those friends that is a separate question which we talk a little bit about in the critique group and we'll talk more about it but this is this uh well you're trying not to be prescriptive but you guys I have watched this happen a bunch of times and I am having this happen on Twitter. If you cannot transition your friends out of these networks that we have no control over, I have a bunch of people that my only interactions with them are on Twitter and now it's gone. Oh, it's gone. gone. It's gone. It's gone because I didn't, I didn't do the work. So this is me talking to myself as much as it is to you. If you have people that you interact with on social media, there are other authors that you're genuine, not, but they're at your level. You're interacting with them. You're really having a good time. Make the effort to move those into actual DM relationships. And possibly email. I would say email or so, so. Again, like getting to the part, I guess what we're trying to say is social media is a tool that we have that is for many things, including community building. But if you're using it as your emotional support network, that I think is sometimes where people really get into trouble. Okay, that's good. And I'm just going to tack this on and we'll put a pin in it for a future episode. But I think... One of the main things that you're saying here that I agree with is you can, we can build our communities on social media and then they can be taken away in any number of ways, whether it's, you know, the platform implodes or the algorithm changes and our stuff isn't getting in front of our people, whatever it is. And so I think, and and I think you've, you've started doing this or you've been doing this for a while, building your email list where you're communicating through like an email newsletter or, you know, a weekly whatever is a much better strategy for long-term relationship building right? online. Right. And we'll definitely do a future episode about building an email <clears throat> list because it's, it's way easier than you think it is. So yes, people. for sure. So I will surely talk about that. For sure. But I think the just really back to what we're saying is like what you want to be there authentically, but you don't, you don't want to get yourself into trouble. Right. Well, and I think part of this with, if we kind of roll back around to boundaries, I think really knowing in your own mind, maybe even putting it in writing, what you choose to not share about what you do choose to to share about, like whether it's picking out three to five topics that you're going to talk about over and over again that have to do with your book and your themes and your quirkiness and, you know, whatever those things are that you're willing to share um, and just sticking to those things, staying in your lane, because I think there is value in being known for something, right? So being very specific and, and authentic and individual, So I think that's super important. And I also feel like unless it's related to your book in some way, like your theme or your story or or whatever, it's often good. And I'm tiptoeing here. We're just going to dip our toe in the water here and jump right back (laughs) out. Sharing opinions about um, incendiary topics, probably not your best bet unless it serves your audience and it serves bringing them to your book and your work. Right. Um, Or it serves the community that you're excited about. Because the other thing that can happen is sometimes, and this is again, getting back to the likes and every, and followers. If you 
end up being really well known for something. And I've seen this happen because I've been in the writing community for a while. People get tagged to talk about something. They're like, I don't want to, I wanted to talk about that for a minute, but that I did not want to have that be, I write books. Like I want to talk about my books and people can get sort of pulled into conversations where they're like, I I don't want to have that conversation. Like, um, one thing, and I can totally tell you guys this. Yeah. Amy knows it. Yeah. I had cancer. I have, I had thyroid cancer. It's Amy's going to laugh at me. It's a baby cancer. It, it's not that big a deal. That's not even a thing, I, but I okay. She's going to say that, but <laughs> it's not the a thing, thing is for me is I did not like having cancer. I didn't like anything about it. I didn't really, I wanted to post about it just because I have the scar and people noticed it. And because I was like, I was out of commission during the whole time when the paperback of lifestyles of gods and monsters came out because it was right when I had the surgery. And so I felt like, and I didn't post around it around the surgery. Cause again, I didn't even know where to start about talking about it. And I was also exhausted because I had surgery. Um, and had it anyway, the, all that. The main thing for me is I do not want to talk about cancer. Like, no, I, no. Well, I think the other lesson and what you just said though, M, is this, we all go through hard things, cancer being like, you know, at the very top of that list among a few other things. And I think you have a choice to make. Are you going to share as you're going through it? And there are people who are super comfortable with that, or are you more comfortable with getting through it, um, finding healing, finishing out the process, whether it was treatment or, you know, or whatever, and getting some perspective and being able to look back and reflect on it and then sharing and maybe sharing the lessons that you've learned. That tends to be more my style. Right. Um, but you really, I think above or all, I think you can intent- not share it at all or not share it at all. I think the point is you want to be very intentional and you want to make sure that you're not painting yourself into a corner And you want to make sure that the things that you're talking about are what you want to be known for. And what you want to talk about. Yes. So I heard something really interesting that I read in Mary Carr's book about writing memoir, but I feel like it's really good for this too. She said, ask yourself the question as you're writing, what charms people about you in real life? Like what, when people like you, what do they like about you? What would your friends say about you? Those are the same things that are going to charm people on social media. Those are the same things that are going to charm people in your writing. So getting back to that idea, like I am never going to pretend to be anything but a super chatty person. Like if you don't like a chatty person, you're not going <laughs> to like me. Or if you don't like somebody who uses their hands to talk. And if you're watching on YouTube, I'm sure you're like, yes, jazz hands. Yes. Jazz hands. Like, so that is one of the pieces of this is like, as you identify what you want to talk about, you can identify like how you want to show up. Like you, this is the the whole thing about this is that like, you get to decide, you get to decide. So I don't want to share about some things you may be the person that's like, Oh my gosh, I love sharing about those things because, and there are other things I'm happy to share about that are hard because I feel like it's inspirational to people. And like, if you listen to Amy's podcast, I loved Amy's podcast. Like it was so good and, and was actually really helpful about parenting stuff, but you get to decide for yourself. Um, but, and then the other biggest thing, you guys, the biggest thing, do not be mean. Do not be mean. Do not yeah. be mean. Do we are prescribing mean. that. We're prescribing that. Yeah. It just, it just don't even, it, 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 we tell our kids and it is true. The internet it's forever. Like it isn't. And it is. And if you send some, this has happened to authors when you're aspiring at a hundred followers and you spent, send some snarky message about some book you read that you hated or some person that you don't that come you. back and bite you in the behind. Right. It just don't do yeah. it. Yeah. Don't do it. 
Don't do it. So what are our practical steps for people? So I would say the very first thing, mindset wise, just really let it soak in that you can be authentic and have really great boundaries. That's number one. That's number one. Um, And then I would say practically what you really want to do is what we talked about a minute ago, which is really sit down and define, I am not going to talk about this. I am going to talk about this over and over and over and over again, right? Um, And then what would you say the last step is? I would say make a list of those two things. Just sit down and make a list of those two things. And one thing I would say that I really thought about was when I thought about showing up authentically, right? And talking about challenges. How can I talk about challenges that I know are common challenges that lots of people have that aren't like open wounds, (laughs) Right. And my thing is, and you'll see this if you, I'm a terrible procrastinator. I always have been. I always have been. It is still true. And so I do post about that. And, and it, I don't, it doesn't, if you said, Emily, you're a terrible procrastinator. Yes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yes, I am. And I am working on it. Right. Well, but I think that's the difference because we've got to remember too, perspective, um, editors, publishers, agents, et cetera, are going to look at your social media. And I don't think you're saying, woohoo, I'm a procrastinator. I'm stuck in this and I'm staying in it. And this is how I am. And, you know, nanny boo boo or whatever. Right. I think you're saying like, I don't even blow my deadlines. Like if you get my taxes will be turned in on April 15th. And if you had, if I had a right, it's just all the other stuff. But I think that Again, this this totally falls in the category, again, back to what Amy was saying at the beginning, it's kind of like a job. Mm -hmm. So when you say, this is the thing about me that's authentic and true and also charming (laughs) and funny and would make people want to read my books, it should be the sort of thing that when someone says, hey, what's your greatest weakness in a job interview, your answer is, I just work too darn hard, you know, or... (laughs) Like whatever the thing is, like, you know, it's it's this, it's like showing up honestly, right? You don't, you don't want to be dishonest, but also you don't want to be like, (laughs) I mean, my biggest struggle is my darn, you know, (laughs) like something terrible. (laughs) I just can't handle my, uh, I can't, I can't even pick anything because of the, you know. Yes, the stigma. We can't. Stigma. You're right. Right. I can't. <laughs> right. I can't. Well, I, and I think I think that's the thing. It's my my stealing things. You know, like the fact oh, that I steal right. things okay. all the time. Or yeah, yeah, know, like egregious. You're talking about egregious yeah. things that people who do it probably aren't going to be talking about it no. online. Right. 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 One would hope. One would. <laughs> One would hope. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. All right. Yeah. So we are almost out of time. Whoa. Okay. So Amy Kelly. What yes. Oh, what am I reading? Ah. What I will start. Yeah, you start. You I start. Am something yeah. really, really fun. It is called or listening to. I say reading, but it's not reading. I'm listening. I think they're the same, but it's called The Creative Habit by Twyla Tharp, who's a dancer. I love Twyla Tharp. And uh, it's really good. I highly recommend. Um, oh, this is a good example about showing up online. I was going to talk about it earlier and then I forgot. I have talked about on the internet that I always wanted to learn to dance, did not learn to dance as a kid for various reasons having to do with basically like my parents couldn't give me to after school activities and I'm clumsy. And so I have been talking about that on the internet. And so that is something where I feel like um, I have been Googling uh, uncoordinated dancing. It's super interesting. You can get like yoga for complete beginners, but dancing for complete beginners, there's there's not that much out there. Not a lot. Where people cannot move their arms. I like, I can't move my arms and legs in different ways. So anyway, I did find one YouTube channel. And so that is something where I feel totally fine showing my ridiculous dancing on the internet. It it doesn't, I don't know why it doesn't like, doesn't bother me. I hope I get better. 
but somebody else would be very uncomfortable with that. So it's figuring out what, what you're comfortable with, what you're comfortable with. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought of one of the things that I've read um, recently, and that is uh, a series that I've seen a lot about, and it fits in with a lot of the other authors and genres that I really enjoy. I just had never picked it up. And it's Holly Black's The Cruel Prince. Those books are so good. <laughs> have you read all of those? I have only, I've read the first one. And the, the first one. one. And then I got. Okay. That. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think there's a, there's a second spinoff series from yeah, it, like I've the stolen air, but I just, yeah, really good. Really good. You, you want to talk about like somebody putting their main character through some really hard stuff. Like, yes. holy cow. I had I to put it to... down a couple of times. Like, yes. What? And also I am so curious about that book. There's a couple other ones. I think it's so interesting where the end, en- where the, the enemy guy, you're like, Oh, that guy is Really he's horrible guy he's horrible like, he's horrible going? and you're rooting for him still <laughs> by the end maybe? Right. maybe i don't know i i just still don't know like it, yeah. it's it's really i love things where you have those mixed feelings about yes your characters and what they do yeah yeah where i love things where you're like like I'm not, I don't, I'm not a horror person. We've talked about that, Ooh, but I no. love the things where you're like, oh, ah, to no. know. <laughs> like suspenseful or, or no, more no, like cringy. Where characters where you're like, not cringy, but okay. where you're like the character, the character's about to go do something where you're like, I don't know that that's going to go very well. <laughs> like where you're like, don't do it. 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 But and yeah. they do it. Oh, there's our time. There's our timer. All right, so, friends. Thanks well, for it, joining us. Yes, we're so glad that you are with us. And please, and you'll hear where you can do this in just a minute, but send us your questions, send us your suggestions. We would love to hear them and talk about them on Time to Rate. Yes. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Bye, people. Thanks so much for being with us today. We love our people and we want to get to know you better. So email us at questions at time to write podcast.com to have your questions considered for the show. You can also suggest topics by emailing us there. Also drop us a review on Apple podcast. Not only will it thrill us. Seriously, we read everyone. It also helps others find the show. We're driven by sharing stories and your review helps us do that. Just remember your stories matter and we're rooting for you to find time to write. Even if it's only five minutes, five minutes, you can do it. You can do it.